In this video, I'm going to show you the way to make distance learning more exciting and more relevant for your students. Before we start, though, let me state that the techniques that I'm going to show you are not just limited to distance learning. They can be used in any classroom to make learning more exciting. Or if you're a hobbyist, you can use these at home instead of having to build or buy a lot of equipment. The principle is very simple. We're simply going to give the student a virtual laboratory. Now, this idea is not new. There have been many programs around to simulate electronic circuits for some time, allowing students to work on laboratory, electronic laboratory equipment in their own home or in a distance learning course. In this video, it's a little different. Instead of simulating electronic circuit, we're going to simulate physical things using Robot Basic. In particular, we're going to simulate four different kinds of motors, and I'll let you, show how, let you see how these work. In this first video, we're simulating a DC motor, as shown here in the lower left-hand corner. This motor is not just a DC motor, but it's also coupled with a tachometer in the back. We're using an actual picture of the motor in this demo. There's a pulley on the motor connected to this larger pulley here in the center, so that we can see the movement easily as the motor speeds up and slows down. We have a board or some type of object laying across the motor, and we have a weight hanging to provide friction. If we change this weight, we'll change the amount of friction. We can also change the mass of this pulley so that the motor will respond in a more sluggish or more quickly. As the motor moves, we also have a graph at the top that can demonstrate easily for the eye how the motor is moving. The idea here is to control the speed of the motor. Let's go ahead and run the program here and see what happens. Here's the program. If we run it, it starts off with some explanations and we see the motor beginning to move. If I click on the large weight here, this weight will become larger and we'll see the motor change its speed. It became much slower. If we go smaller, it'll become faster again. Now if I change it to a heavy motor, a heavy pulley that is, then when I go to a larger weight, you'll see how much more sluggish the motor is. That, of course, is because of the greater moment of inertia of a heavier pulley. Notice how slowly the motor speed climbs. This lab is set up so the student can go into this program, change one subroutine, and write using a duty cycle parameter and control this motor just as they would a real motor. Let's go on to another example. In this demo, the left side of the screen shows some of the explanation to the user. This will disappear in a moment. We see a stepper motor here in the center with a pointer to help you visualize how it moves. Connected on a rod upward from the stepper motor is a spool. And as thread rolls up on this spool, we can lift this elevator. Notice there are th a shaft going through three rooms with a limit switch at the bottom. All this is simulated so that the user, the student, can go in and program this stepper motor by giving it the stepper motor codes, just as you would program a real motor, and cause this motor to move up and down. We have buttons here the third floor down button, the first floor up button, and then on the second floor you have both an up and a down. And the idea is for the student to write a complete program to control this and make it act like a real elevator. Now when I taught college, I had many students build this for a project. And they spent far more time constructing the elevator than they did learning the things they should be learning. Let's push one of these buttons and see how this works. If I press the down, the instructions will disappear and the elevator will begin to move. Notice the stepper motor moving here in the middle. If I press up, the elevator moves up again as the thread winds up on the spool. Let's go down again. Imagine how motivational this would be to a student to be able to immediately begin working on this. Or even in a classroom, if the teacher has this up on the board as they're beginning to teach the students how a motor works. Now, if we try to continue f further down, the simulator even simulates the idea that the motor could be damaged. 
if I go down further, we get an error message popped up. It says the elevator has been damaged because you've moved it too far. You've pushed it against the bottom of the shaft in this case. Let's move on to our next example. In this example, we have a DC motor. You see the small DC motor right here in the center. The DC motor has a gear head on it, and the gear head is then connected to this potentiometer all the way in the back. So whenever the motor moves, the potentiometer moves, giving us some feedback. Because we're going to assume that the potentiometers in this example are connected to A to D converters. We also have another potentiometer up here in the front that's connected to this front pointer. If we click on the instructions up here, the program will start. There's a very simple program in it to begin with. Notice we see a pointer here that has a red tip and a blue tip. If I use the mouse to move this tip, you'll notice that the red tip begins to move with it. The graph at the top helps make this more visible. Now if we hold the mouse down on the graph somewhere, we can pause it so that we could talk to someone about what's going on. Notice in this particular case, as we move the blue pointer, we see the movement up here, and the motor tried to track. In this case, it's not doing a very good job because we're simply turning the motor on at a fixed speed and making it move in the direction that the pointer is. If we increase that speed a lot, the motor will come very quickly back to its destination, but it will overshoot dramatically. The idea is to help the student understand these type of principles and then motivate them even further by talking about proportional control or even PID control if that's appropriate for your curriculum. But imagine being able to control this motor at home, in a distance learning environment, or in a classroom while you're trying to teach this stuff to some students. Let's move on to another example. In this example, we're simulating a servo motor, much like you might see with a model airplane. There's a small tab here that moves as the motor moves. In this case, we're simulating a 90 degree motor. You control this motor, if you're a student, by specifying the particular pulse width that has to be sent to the motor, just as you would if you were controlling a real motor. As the pointer moves, this bar comes over and moves this plate behind, which then moves the items behind the eyes, causing the eyes to move. Let's see how this works. Start the program. Can you imagine the excitement that a student might have instead of just trying to program a simple servo motor that they begin to program this idea and get the eyes to move? Now, all these examples can be further enhanced with Robot Basic. For example, Robot Basic, as you've seen in some of our other videos, has the ability to capture pictures from a webcam, analyze those pictures, and provide vision. See our vision video if you want to see what I mean. But imagine a student that the assignment is to hold up an object in front of the screen so that the webcam can see it and have these eyes follow that object as they move it around in front of the screen. I think you'll find a lot of excitement for your students if you use Robot Basic in any of these ways. I hope you've got some ideas on how to use Robot Basic in a distance learning environment or even in a regular classroom. If you like what you saw, go to robotbasic.com, click on the Education tab, and download all the programs that you saw here. Don't forget to get a copy, a free copy, of Robot Basic while you're there. Thanks for watching.